I had a question for you with, um, you know, we talked about your, I mean, we talked about a little bit of everything, but obviously we covered your very successful career as an athlete, but you've done some amazing things as a coach as well. And, um, you know, there are a lot of young coaches, you know, like I said, I volunteered at Illinois when you were there, a lot of young coaches who kind of want to get in the game, a a lot of young female coaches who want to get in the game and move up in in the ranks and, and, and get these positions. What advice do you have for coaches who are, who are, who are trying to become, who are trying to model you, who are trying to become championship coaches and, 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 you know, create national champions and all Americans and all of that. Well, I, it helps to get in. When I came into the sport as a coach, I came in under my coach. So um, we started out where he was like, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about being a coach. Right. So um, that it was a process. It, it was three years before I got my own group. Right. And so it was, uh, they used to call me the clipboard girl, you know, people who was jealous. <laughs> They would call me the clipboard girl. Oh, she's just walking around Gary's clipboard. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm learning. So in a couple of years, watch out for me because I'm figuring this thing out. So he would tell me like, I would have to stand around for the shot put, high jump, pole vault, the throwing events. Like we were, it was a single gender program. So you have three coaches in all the events. So I learned all the events. I understood all events. And he said, you know, one day when you become a head coach, if your throws coach get hit by a bus on the way to the track meet, you're gonna need to coach your team. Mm-hmm. I'm like, cause it's your team, right? <laughs> so, um, so that was, those were things that it took, it, it was years for me to learn before I actually start. And then I um, started uh, working on understanding how to do an entire program and how you start at the fall season and how it morphs into what you want to see at the end of at the end of the year so that by the time you're in June at the NCAA championships, you're getting the result that you intended to get, right? Um, Instead of you see like these athletes running really fast the first one or two races and then they're either injured or running slow or nowhere to be seen. And ultimately in our sport, nothing matters other than the outdoor NCAA championships, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's cool when it's indoor, but Ultimately, <laughs> that's where all the shoe companies sitting around waiting to fi- see who they're going to sign contracts for. And yep. that's where the teams that you make, it's all in June. None of that stuff is happening in March. Okay. Maybe rare few here or there people, but the most, for the most part, you know, it is a long, long process and you need to have the athletes ready when it matters. Right. And that's tough because your athletes are seeing people pop times and they're like, why aren't we running fast like that? And I'm like, because you have to call their coach and ask them what their plan was. Because <laughs> their plan might have been the indoor national meet. Maybe, maybe that's, and I'm not saying that's a bad plan. That's just their plan, right? That's not my plan. That's not our plan. Oh. So um, it's hard to keep athletes continuing to stay focused and focusing on what that the real plan is, which is, you know, months and months away. Um, so I learned all those kind of things. I learned how to... Um, manage athletes from start to finish and that kind of thing. I always enjoy the recruiting side of it. Um, But I think it's important to get under a mentorship and have a couple of coaches that you really can ask questions to. Um, And and I mean, I mean, questions that are saying, I don't know what I'm here doing here. Help me. Right. Instead of going and thinking you, you know, I was a good athlete, so I should know how to coach this track thing because it's two totally different things right oh yeah (laughs) you know it it was crazy because when I when I started coaching I realized how much I didn't even know about the team that I was on right so so the the team that I was on I focused on me the people that was on my relay and and a couple like I, I didn't know that there was this humongous different level of all these different athletes there for different reasons some people were just happy to have a scholarship. Some people were walk-ons. Uh, some people just wanted to be a part of, you know, this, this whole system. Like it was, there was so like, you can have a team of 50 women and every single person on the team have, has a different reason for why they're there, mm-hmm. right? And until I started to coach, I'd never even realized that, you know? So um, 
that's a lot to manage and to understand and, you know, to figure out how that works. So the coaching side of it is not just the performance you see on the track. It's a lot behind the scenes. It's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And then ultimately, I know for me, the greatest years of my life was when I was in college. I had so much fun. Um, I picked the right school. I picked the right coach. It was just fun. I, I just can't even tell you how much I enjoy college. And I always just wanted everybody else to experience the same thing. It's like, these are going to be the greatest years of your life. So enjoy it. So I never liked to see people not enjoying that period because um, I, I feel like it, it only goes downhill from there. <laughs> so as a college coach, craft. make sure your athletes are enjoying their experience. Learn your craft, make sure your athletes are enjoying your experience That's and good. find a mentor. And then also know that there's a lot to manage. Mm -hmm. You can't make it so difficult that nobody's having any fun. Not at that level. Mm -hmm.